is not what I paid for the RTX 4090 that I'm going to be unboxing in today's video, but it is what you can pay for awesome graphic tees from this video's sponsor into the AM during their Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales running from now through December 4th. You can save up to 80% on beautiful graphic tees like this awesome one right here. This is one of my recent favorites. It's got this beautiful cyberpunk scene. It's got kitty cats on it. Kitty cats. What more can you ask for? It's beautiful. Well, you could ask for uh, a comfortable t-shirt. And it just so happens these t-shirts from Into the AM are. They are slightly stretchy. They're really nicely fitted. I think they have a really flattering cut. I love to wear them for their comfort and their looks, and they are easy to care for as well. You can throw them in the washer and dryer. They're pre-shrunk. They're great that way. What more could you ask for than that? Ah, well, how about an additional 10% off on top of the ridiculous savings from the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale? You can get that by using the link down below at the top of the video description or pinned in the top comment there. You will save 10% off your entire order and you will be supporting me and this channel when you do so, which I appreciate very, very much because it allows me to keep making content like this and buying ridiculously expensive graphics cards to reinvest in the channel and make sure that you guys have the best quality content I can possibly bring you. So once again, into the AM's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale, save up to 80% on beautiful graphic tees and much more. They've got all kinds of awesome apparel, beautiful designs. They're getting new stuff in all the time. Check them out at the link at the top of the video description and save 10% off additionally using that link and my code there. Big thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. Hello. US dollars. That is 
more money than pretty much anybody should spend on a GPU. And I say this not as a flex, I say it because I'm a little bit sheepish about spending this much money on a graphics card. I've never done that before. Um, my previous card, which you might remember uh, I unboxed about a year and a half ago, um, is an RTX 3080, and that was a very expensive card for me at the time. Uh, this card uh, is a little bit more than the the MSRP uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price for the the base 4090. This comes in at around 1,700 US dollars, and roughly speaking, that is about as much as the value of everything else in my PC combined. So that's pretty stupid. Um, however, however, um, the reason I decided to get an RTX 4090 is twofold. Uh, and the most important part of it is you guys. I wanted to uh, be able to record the best quality gameplay footage, the smoothest, the best looking, with no compromises. I wanted to be able to do it without having to worry about a loud video card cranking out a bunch of noise and heat in the background, and I wanted to be able to do it for years to come, um, and, you know, really provide you guys the best possible content that I can. So, uh, really the motivation behind upgrading to this card is uh, wanting to reinvest in the channel and uh, take some of, uh, you know, what I've earned through this channel and put it back into ensuring that I keep bringing you guys the best possible quality of content. So, uh, the RTX 3080, which I am upgrading from, is still a powerful card, uh, and it has served its role really well. Um, it uh, has, for the most part, managed to run games at 4K 60fps uh, with everything turned up, and, uh, you know, record footage, um, encode video at the same time. But sometimes, every once in a while, it chokes. Um, my heavily modded Skyrim definitely challenges my 4080. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 with all the ray tracing bells and whistles turned on definitely causes it to choke. And there are uh, scenarios like that where uh, I just can't maintain that 60 FPS, uh, that nice smooth gameplay, uh, you know, experience for you guys. Um, and even worse, there have been times where, as I was recording, it looked like it was recording at a solid 60 FPS, but upon going and reviewing the video, I realized that the actual video recording, the encoding that also happens on the GPU, was choking uh, and stuttering. Um, and I've had to throw away footage before, and in other cases I've just had to publish footage that I felt was subpar. So, um, anyway, that's a very long-winded justification for this ridiculous purchase, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of context for why I'm spending 1700 US dollars on a graphics card. Again, I don't think that's the kind of money that most people should expend on a GPU, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's absurd that graphics cards are getting this expensive. However, however, the RTX 4090 is, as I said, truly ridiculous in pretty much every way, and that expend, extends to its performance as well. Um, the RTX 4090 
outperforms my old RTX 3080 by about 100%. So it doubles the performance of my RTX 3080 in uh, traditional rasterized rendering. Um, so that's non-ray traced rendering. Um, and it more than doubles the performance of the 3080 uh, in ray traced uh, applications. Uh, something like 130% uh, faster. So um, it, it's it's very, very fast and very, very powerful. And um, I just decided, yeah, I wanted to get something where I would not have to worry about performance, where I could just turn everything to the max, record at the highest quality settings, and not have to worry about fiddling with settings or worrying about uh, stuttery video encoding. So I'm just throwing money at the problem, and here we are. <laughs> um, hopefully it proves to be a good investment that you all appreciate and that I enjoy as well. And that's the other part of this. I mentioned there's two reasons why I decided to splurge on this insanity. Uh, and the other reason is that I just wrapped up my PhD. It was many years of, of struggle, and so I kind of wanted to treat myself a little bit, too. So it's, it's you know, it serves a dual purpose. Um, anyway, that's quite a bit of preamble, um, but uh, suffice it to say, I think this is going to be a really, really fun card to unbox. I think it's going to be a really fun card to, to use and to create content with as well. That's the other thing too, I didn't even mention, but uh, this should significantly uh, uh, improve my rendering times for the videos that I produce for you guys as well. Should do it quite a bit faster, so. Uh, lots of fun reasons why I'm trying to, you know, justify this to myself, but I think it's gonna be great. So, um, the RTX 4090, the, uh, the other elephant in the room, which I will address right off the, the get-go here, now that we're 10 minutes into the video, is, uh, of course, the, the recent reports uh, uh, of issues with the power adapter uh, that powers this thing. Um, there have been quite a few reports of people's uh, power adapters melting over the last month or so. That's worrisome. Uh, so the, the story there, you'll see when we get inside, but uh, the RTX 4090s and the high-end cards from the last generation, uh, they use um, a new type of power adapter, a 12 or 16 pin power adapter, depending on how you count it, rather than the typical eight pin PCIe power adapters or power plugs. And um, this 12-pin uh, adapter um, is, is not supported by uh, most power supplies. So, um, or this 12-pin plug, I should say, I keep saying adapter, but really they use a 12-pin plug. So what you need is an adapter that goes from the 8-pin the PCI Express connectors to uh, this 12-pin plug if you're running an older power supply. Um, there are a handful of power supplies on the market now that follow the ATX 3.0 spec, I believe it is, that do have uh, native power cables with this 12-volt adapter, but most don't. Now, I did recently buy a new power supply for this card as well, um, but I did not buy one of the new ATX 3.0 power supplies um, because they're quite expensive for what they are, and uh, I thought I would be safe going with the older style of power supply with the, you know, the 8-pin GPU connectors um, by going with a really nice high-quality one from Corsair. So that's what I did. Little did I know that uh, there were going to be these issues with the adapter. So the adapter is, as you'll see when we get inside, um, a cable harness thing that goes from four of the old 8-pin style plugs to one of the new 
uh, 12 pin style. And again, I'm rambling here, but the long story short is that a number of users have been finding that um, that adapter where it plugs into the card has been heating up and melting. Some of the pins are melting. And um, no one's quite sure why yet. There's been a lot of theories floated, but no one really seems to have an answer. It seems to have affected all kinds of different models of uh, RTX 4090s, including the ASUS stuff. So that's a bit worrisome. Um, and uh, all kinds of different models of power supplies, including actually some of the native ATX 3.0 power supply, uh, 12 volt or 12 pin uh, plugs seem to have been affected as well. So, point is, I'm going to try this out. <laughs> I'm going to try using the included adapter in the box. I'm going to keep a very close eye on it, and uh, I'm going to try and follow all the rules that they suggest to minimize your risk of melting GPU adapters. Hopefully, I don't run into any issues, but there's an outside possibility that I will. What uh, is most surprising, perhaps, is that NVIDIA has said nothing about uh, this yet. There's been no official statement. Uh, I believe they've basically said they're looking into it. But it has been some weeks now, and uh, it seems a little crazy that something that could potentially be a fire hazard has not been addressed more formally. There's been no recall. There's been no revisions of the adapters issued. Nothing. So uh, that is certainly um, a, a, a worry. <laughs> but I'm, I'm banking on the fact that probably most cards and adapters and setups are not affected by this issue. Of course, there's probably been a few dozen cases that have been, uh, you know, uh, brought forward and, uh, um, you know, demonstrated online from users so far. But there's probably been quite a few of these things sold. Thousands, at least. Probably tens of thousands. Um, and... I'm, I'm banking on the fact that the actual failure rate there is probably pretty low. Anyhow, that's my that's my risk to take on, but hopefully this upgrade does not end up destroying my PC or burning down my house or something. Uh, for those wondering, yes, I'm aware of the cable mod uh, adapters. Yes, I um, am waiting to order one of those cable mod right angle adapters, which they claim that is going to be totally safe, no issues whatsoever. We'll see if that's the case when that eventually arrives, but it's probably going to be a month or more until that does happen. Okay, gosh. This is all a lot of talking at, off the top, but we will get into the unboxing here, I promise. And you probably already noticed, but there are uh, timestamps uh, or, you know, chapter markers in the play bar down here where you can skip around the video um, if you're tired of my talking. And if that's the case, you've probably already done so. So this is redundant for me to tell you, but... So, the Asus Tough Gaming RTX 4090. This is the entry-level RTX 4090 from Asus. Um, the Strix is their top-end model. Uh, for my 3080, I went with the Strix, but for the 4090, it was a $550 premium. That's Canadian dollars, mind you, but still um, over the tough model. And as much as I do like the, the visual design of the Strix line, and I'm sure it is very, very well built, I could not justify the premium, given that the performance is probably going to be within a few percentage points. So, um, and by all accounts, the Tough uh, series uh, cooler is a very good one. Uh, I 
it's uh, quiet and cool, and uh, they, they, honestly, all the RTX 4090s have very overbuilt cooling systems for what they require. So um, the Strix just seemed like unnecessary overkill at this point. Um, and uh, the hope is that uh, this will be nice and quiet in gameplay, so that when I'm recording, you guys don't even hear it. It'll just be a whisper, a whisper that you won't even notice. Um, the RTX 4090 is of course built on NVIDIA's new Ada Lovelace architecture, which uh, takes advantage of TSMC's new uh, 4N custom uh, process node, which is um, NVIDIA's uh, a customized um, process uh, specifically for their Ada Lovelace cards. Um, uh, it, it has a 5 nanometer node as opposed to Samsung's 8 nanometer custom node uh, from the previous generation, the uh, Ampere generation. Uh, all of that is to say that the, the new uh, GPUs uh, are significantly more power efficient than the last generation. This is, of course, usually what happens. You see efficiency gains generation over generation, but I bring it up because the RTX 4090 kind of got out of the gate with a bad reputation for being very power hungry. And it can be if you really drive it hard. If you want to squeeze every last little drop of performance out of it, then yeah, it, it can be kind of power hungry. Um, but it can also be very efficient especially if you're willing to power limit the card a little bit from its stock settings. Um, and in terms of performance per watt, it's actually very impressive. So, um, in that regard, it should run relatively cool with a, uh, you know, a, a modest power limit on it, which is probably what I'll do in order to keep things quiet for you guys while I game. Um, comes equipped with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X, which is an absurd amount of memory that most users will not need. Um, but if you do any sort of, uh, uh, intense productivity, uh, work or, um, you know, 3D, uh, design and that kind of stuff, I'm sure you can make use of that. Me personally, I probably won't, but it's nice to have such a large frame buffer. Maybe a bit of future-proofing. Certainly not going to hurt things. Uh, this generation supports, of course, the LSS 3.0, which is NVIDIA's uh, image upscaling technology. It's basically magic. It takes a lower resolution image, blows up to a higher resolution image with very little discernible image quality loss. Sometimes it even looks better than a native image at that blown up resolution. The LSS 3.0, further improves upon DLSS 2. It also offers uh, what they call their frame generation. So it's a sort of a frame interpolation which can theoretically double your FPS by inserting made up frames in between the real rendered frames. And the card does this with its tensor cores. It's AI driven. So the card basically guesses at what the next frame should look like, and it inserts that frame, and then it properly renders the next frame. Um, I've seen some videos on this technology. It looks cool as hell. It's got some issues, but I think there's a lot of potential um, for future, you know, refinements, and I think eventually it will be considered a, a really, really uh, good value feature. Probably not so critical on an RTX 4090 since this thing should be able to brute force its way through pretty much any game at high frame rates right now. But maybe in the future, when even more challenging games come out, perhaps it will be, uh, you know, valuable even on this beast. Uh, of course, the ray tracing engine um, has been uh, upgraded. Um, the new RT cores on the Ada Lovelace cards are even more powerful and efficient than on the Ampere cards. And um, gen over gen, we see some pretty significant increases in ray trace performance. Um, 
And there's some other pretty cool features in videos, reflex, low latency modes, and uh, the uh, RTX Studio, which there's a whole thing there about like remastering old DirectX 9 and 10 games. Um, you know, like capturing the geometry and like exporting them to RTX Studio and upgrading them to physically based materials and adding ray trace lighting and then packaging it up as a mod and making that available to people um, in order to play old games looking way better. Um, a whole lot of promises that NVIDIA has made there. Honestly, it seems like black magic. I'm going to be really curious to actually check that stuff out and see once some of those mods start releasing how that stuff operates and, and you know, um, if it's as magical as they say. So the front of this particular box is actually pretty unassuming considering the outrageous power of the card within and the outrageous price of the product. This is fairly plain, it's fairly reserved looking. We have the Asus logo up here. I personally am kind of an Asus fan. Um, I've used their products for many years. I find that they're uh, really great um, and uh, you know tend to be a very good quality. So I like to go with Asus when I can. Um, the Tough Gaming series, as I mentioned, is their, their entry level series. <laughs> whatever that means for a 1700 US dollar graphics card. We have a big glossy picture of the card here. As you will see once we get this open, it's really big. Like, it's absurdly large. Um, and my old, old 3080 Strix uh, was a big card, but this is, this is going to be bigger. Um, or sync RGB, which I don't really care about because I don't have a window in my case. So, um, and uh, yeah, the product designation down here, little NVIDIA logo. Interesting box with the sort of cut off corners. Looks kind of nice, um, but fairly plain considering uh, just kind of this matte gray black situation here. Let's look around. It's very heavy. RTX 4090 on the top. Tough gaming, it says. On the bottom, system requirements. So I believe Asus recommends an 850 watt power supply minimum for this card. Uh, Linus Tech Tips actually did some testing and found that you could probably get away with less than that. But um, nonetheless, uh, you know, that's probably a solid requirement if you have a reasonably beefy processor and you're planning to do any overclocking. In fact, for my CPU, which is a, a Radeon, or, or pardon me, Ryzen R9 5950X, um, it's recommended to have even more wattage uh, because that CPU will uh, drink back power as well, especially if you have, uh, you know, precision boost overdrive and such turned on and you allow it to do that. Um, and if you're doing any sort of heavily multi-threaded tasks with the GPU also ramped up, um, then, you know, you want the overhead. So, uh, I opted for a 1200 watt, uh, Corsair power supply, uh, platinum efficiency. That should be ample, uh, for this card and that CPU, uh, to both run overclocked if I want. Although, like I said, I'm probably going to be power limiting this card rather than overclocking. But um, on this side here, can I turn it? I can, although you can't really see very much. <laughs> it's very close to the camera, but Asus Tough Gaming Graphics Card. It's all the same kind of stuff we saw on the front, really. And uh, I bet you the other end is, yeah, the other end is pretty much the same. On the back here, it's going to talk about all kinds of things that I've already talked about, probably. Talks about the, uh, the very overbuilt cooling uh, that we've got going on here. Of course, we've got a vapor chamber, uh, giant heat sink, all the fins, you know, um, the heat pipes running through it. We've got a back plate. Uh, we've got these three, what they call their uh, axial flow fans, I think. Um, 
durability. It's built with what they call military grade capacitors, whatever that really means. But, um, you know, uh, it uses premium components and it should last for a very long time. Um, really lovely looking in my opinion. Well, maybe lovely is a bit of a stretch, but it's relatively reserved compared to some of the gaudier cards out there. And it's got this nice aluminum shroud, which I think looks really good. So, um, software, who cares? Asus has their own thing, but use whatever software you want, <laughs> you know, MSI, uh, Afterburner or EVGA Precision or whatever. Uh, RIP EVGA, EVGA, by the way, they are no longer producing graphics cards, as I'm sure many of you know. Uh, their presence is missed this generation. Uh, EVGA is another company that I, you know, uh, used to stand by uh, in terms of their quality and customer service and such. Uh, we got a bunch of ports and things. Um, yeah, just a bunch more advertising for various features down here. Um, shall we? Shall we open it up? We've got a three-year limited warranty from Asus. Fortunately, it seems like anybody who's had the uh, power adapter melting problems has generally had that addressed quite quickly, had the card are made quite quickly. I imagine manufacturers are a bit nervous about that. Potential lawsuits on the horizon, especially if there was to be some kind of fire. So it seems like they're being pretty good about replacing those cards right now. Uh, hopefully that's not something I have to deal with. Okay. Let's do this. I guess one question I did not answer is why am I unboxing this card a month after the RTX 4090 released? And the answer there is that I wanted to wait on the Asus Tough model. I was actually at my local computer shop on launch morning. I hadn't really even planned to be there necessarily. At that point, I hadn't totally decided I was going to buy one. But, um... Anyway, I was there on launch morning. They did have some cards available on launch day. Uh, they were the Gigabyte Gaming OC models. Um, and I almost bought one then and there. <laughs> but I said, you know what? I'm going to take my time. I'm going to wait for the reviews to come out and find out which cards are supposed to be good and quiet. And uh, ultimately, this one was a little bit cheaper than that model anyway. So think it will serve me well, but it took them this long to get it in. Uh, this is the very first one that showed up at their shop, because uh, I was first on the list, so. Okay, uh, what am I doing here? I'm gonna flip this over, I guess. And, and I'm going to this without being too loud or bumping things, especially when it's heavy like this. that uh, RTX 4090s are selling well over MSRP 
on the secondary market, like, you know, eBay and such. Scalpers gonna scalp. It's funny because NVIDIA did say that there was gonna be plenty of stock at launch for this generation. And I would have thought with the crypto mining crash and all that, that, you know, we would have ample uh, inventory of these cards for people who want to be crazy and spend $1,700 on a GPU, but evidently that's not the case. <laughs> Seems like there is still a shortage of RTX 4090s. Crazy. Um, so inside we have this matte black cardboard box with this very kind of slightly cringe military uh, aesthetic. Uh, like I said, I think the card itself looks fine, um, but I'm not a big fan of the tough gaming, you know, mil-spec look. I think it's a little bit cringe, but that's just me. Maybe some people like it. Um, I just prefer it when they, you know, it's more reserved and more or less stays out of the way. Okay, how does this open now? So it looks like it just kind of lifts up here, but let's just see if there's anything else to, to see around the back side here. Um, just got more kind of like you know, hash mark kind of going on there. Uh, for some reason we've got some Italian here. Is that Italian? I think it's Italian. Um, it's kind of weird. because it means I can't remove this. No, it's attached. Uh, which kind of blocks the lighting a bit here, but we'll get the box out of the way in a moment anyway. So uh, inside we have the RTX 4090. It is outrageously large. Um, you can't really see, but there's some foam padding on the top of the box here, which is really nice. Um, the card is, of course, very safely nestled within uh, some dense packing foam here. Um, here is the infamous melting adapter. Uh, might as well take a look at that right now before we get to the main event. Um, so, uh, despite, you know, all the different third-party companies having their own designs for the cards themselves, this adapter uh, actually comes uh, from NVIDIA, and um, so all of the cards have this same adapter in it. Now, there are third-party companies that make custom adapters, but they don't ship with these cards, obviously. So, as you can see, we have a power squid situation. One, two, three, four, eight pin PCI Express GPU power connectors. Those are going to come out of the power supply, plug in here. They're all feeding into a single 12 pin power cable with four sense pins on the top. That's why you sometimes see it called a 16 pin cable, but it's got 12 power delivery. Uh, cables there. So, um, I mean, it looks, it looks okay. <laughs> the uh, centering of the pins in each plug there looks okay. Uh, evidently, you have to be very careful to make sure that you plug this in really all the way, like all the way, all the way, like just cram it in there. Um, you don't want it to, 
you don't want there to be poor contact between the metal pins in there and the, uh, the conductors in the, the plug on the card. Uh, also, apparently, you are not supposed to bend this at a really uh, tight radius, um, because, of course, the connector is on the side of the card, this edge, I guess, and so this sticks out the side, and then has to route down towards your power supply in the bottom of the case in most situations. Um, and because this is such a wide card, some people have been kind of cramming this in there and just jamming up the, the panel, the case uh, side panel, and uh, that's potentially, uh, you know, uh, pulling or putting tension on the pins within the adapter here. Uh, leading to improper contact, uh, which can generate heat. So, whew, let's hope this thing does its job. It does not melt on me. What else do we have here? Uh, a tough gaming thing. What is this? Oh, it's a cable wrap. This is probably, you know, manual driver driver disc. Do they still ship driver discs with GPUs? I don't know. Let's find out. Sure, a 
cardboard standee. I don't know. That's a weird choice if that's the case. Um, Starfleet logo. Oh, yes, yeah, right. The trading cards. I still have my RTX 3080 Strix trading card, or so. Uh, I will add this to the, to the, I think it was for the Strix I got it, or was it for the motherboard? Anyway, Asus likes to ship these, these trading cards. <laughs> Overclocking and heat dissipation rankings. Funny. Um, but, sure, why not? Why not? The ridiculous packins you get with your $1,700 graphics card. Value add, obviously. Yeah, there you go. So we've got a warranty card here, but um, this here. So what I was trying to trying to explain, sort of failing at earlier. You can adjust the height. I think it's magnetic on the bottom, so it'll attach to the bottom of the case or the top of your power supply, I guess, whatever is down there. And then you can literally prop up your graphics card with it. Also, it becomes a screwdriver if you want. A certificate of reliability, tough gaming. There you go. So this is about all the certifications for its components, I guess. Shock test, salt spray test. If you've got salt spray inside your PC, I think you've got bigger problems. But anyway, um, yeah, different components, the capacitors and the chokes are rated in various ways here. That's nice to know, at least. And here's a quick start guide. Sadly, we did not get a driver disc. I suppose the age of optical media is truly past us now. Not surprising, but still a little bit sad. Okay, um, and that's, that's truly everything. So let's put that back in there. And, um, and, uh, close the lid, like so. Does not want to close fully, that's okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll just put it aside and I'll bring out the main event. Okay. Here is the beast. Of course, it is safely enshrouded in a uh, anti-static bag, um, but we'll take it out of there. Uh, gosh darn, these things are thick. Thick with five C's. Thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. Um, much noise, but I'll fix it in post. Express connector right there, 
and that's what plugs into your motherboard. Unless you have a vertical mount, of course, which I do not in my case. So, uh, it's typical, typical horizontal mount. This plugs in like so. And this is the surface that you see. We've got some, I don't know, kind of circuit boardy looking stencils on here. That's fine by me. Doesn't look too, too outrageous. And then this kind of hexagonal pattern over here. Again, I think that looks okay. We've got GeForce RTX right here. Uh, we've got performance mode and quiet mode. So we have a little switch here, just a tiny little toggle that switches between the two. Um, uh, from benchmarking I've seen, performance mode is maybe a couple percent faster, but it does ramp up the fans more. I will probably keep it in quiet mode, to be honest, for the most part. Um, but, you know, you can also power limit or whatnot to, to get it even quieter. This fan, uh, this uh, card does have idle fan stop, so if it's not using much power, uh, it'll actually just be silent, which is always nice. Um, so, uh, and then of course the GPU itself sits underneath this bracket on the other side of the, the circuit board. Um, this metallic bracket here is what's holding down the, uh, the, uh, cooler on the other side, um, and applying pressure to keep, uh, the plate in, uh, really tight contact with the surface of the GPU package. So that's all of that. Let's come around to the side here. Here we've got the Notorious connector. So the 12 pin power connector is situated on the edge of the PCB right there. As I was describing earlier, this side faces the side of your case in a horizontal mount arrangement. And so that uh, power squid adapter, wherever I put it, over here, the power squid adapter um, goes in like so, and this has to bend this way to go down to your power supply. Again, if you've not got a lot of space in your case, uh, then uh, you might be bumping into your side panel here. I should have a few centimeters of clearance, but it's probably not enough to be ideal, which is why I'm going to be ordering that right angle connector from cable mod, because that should just emerge from here and then go straight down. And that will work better. But for now, we're gonna risk it with this. Uh, GeForce RTX says here, Tough Gaming. I believe the Tough Gaming logo lights up in RGB. You can see the actual size of the PCB here. It's only about maybe two thirds the length of the whole card. And then all this extra cooling and jazz up there. Moving around to the front or underside, I don't know what you call it. Um, we have three big axial flow fans, which Asus claims are increased in their efficiency and acoustic performance over previous generations. Tough gaming branding right here. This shroud is aluminum, which is nice. Um, but you don't really see this side when it's in the CPU or in the, the case, in the PC case, uh, because this is facing downwards, once again, unless you have that uh, vertical mount set up. Um, you basically see this, and you see that. So, I think from the side, it looks really nice. Uh, it's quite uh, reserved in its aesthetics for the most part. Um, let's pull off some of these little protective films, shall we? One, two, three. We have the tough logo on the outside fans, the Asus logo in a crosshair, the middle fan. And for some reason, this also has a protective film on it. Mission. That's a little bit cringe. I don't know what this is all about, but it's like some coordinates. I'm sure somebody has put those coordinates into a, the Google, uh, figured out where that points to. It's probably like Asus HQ or something. 
I don't know, one of you could try that if you want. I could do without that, but it doesn't bother me, it's pretty subtle. Um, here's the side of the card that will be facing the motherboard. Again, you can see an absolutely massive heat sink in there. As I said before, the cooling solutions for these cards are actually really overbuilt. As such, they run very cool and very quiet, despite the substantial power draw of the RTX 4090. But, you know, it is relatively efficient for the level of performance you're getting, right? So, or it's very efficient for the level of performance, really. It's, it's, it's remarkably efficient. It's just such a monster in performance that the total power draw of the card is still substantial. Um, there's the plugs for the fans. Two of them, at least. All those fins in there. They'll be aluminum fins, but I believe it's a copper contact plate underneath there. And then the heat pipes that carry, carry the heat out to the fin stack. And then the fans blow through and they dissipate it. Of course, the whole point of having all these fins is to maximize surface area for heat dissipation. Okay, let's uh, we'll quickly look around this end here, just so you can see. So we've got, again, this aluminum shroud. It feels very solid on this end. And then this kind of chunky ornamentation here. I'm not sure what the, this is about. It looks like, you know, you should be able to screw something in there, but there's really nothing there, so I don't know what that's about. This is, of course, the terminus, terminations of the heat pipes in there. And finally, we've got the back plate. <laughs> like how you can see. You can see when you orient it this way, can see just how absurd this thing is in its sizing. So this is a standard size backplate. Usually GPUs will stick out a little bit beyond it, but not this much. We've got this huge Hawken piece out here, and then you can see this occupies three and a half slots, I believe. That might cause some problems, because I do have an expansion card in there. I'm gonna have to look and see. Hopefully I can arrange everything. I have a USB uh, USB 3 expansion card, and I have my Elgato game capture card. Uh, so I'll just have to see how I can configure it, but hopefully I can fit everything in there because this is going to block uh, a handful of PCI Express slots there. Uh, our various ports, we have HDMI 2.1, a pair of those, and our display port uh, ports here as well with these little plugs in them. I can't remember what the current display port standard is, but I do know that people were upset that these cards aren't shipping with the latest one. It's potentially a problem for people who want like 8K 120Hz displays or 4K 240, I believe. I don't have one of those. I have a 4K 120Hz display, and that's quite enough for me. The HDMI 2.1 ports should do that just fine. Um, but let's, oh, we're gonna block here, aren't we? Okay, let's unplug all these <laughs> and then remove, remove the, the, uh, film. You know what, I'm gonna configure this in a slightly safer way so it doesn't fall over on me. Let's do that. And we can unplug these down here now, hopefully actually kind of stiff <laughs> there. These are of course just there to prevent dust and whatnot, you know. But if you're not using the ports, you might as well keep them in there. I'll put them back in after. Kinook. Uh, Come on, there we go. And now, now we can remove the protective film here off the stainless steel back plate. Very 
nice, very shiny. And let's just, you know what, let's plug these back in for the time being. There we go. It is beastly. It is very heavy, which I love, because it means there's a lot of metal in here, which means a lot of heat dissipation and a really nice spilled quality. So uh, that is fantastic. It feels great. Uh, honestly, uh, it's, I mean, far and away, the, I'm gonna say, largest card I've ever seen. Probably the largest there's ever been more or less. Um, although my RTX 3080 was very big too, um, I just don't think it was quite as long. I'm gonna have to compare them side by side uh, when I swap them out, just out of curiosity. Uh, I was hoping to do that in the video right now, but the 3080 is still on my PC and I needed it in there for a little while longer, so I didn't want to go yanking it out. Um, so I don't have that comparison for you, I'm afraid, but I mean, you can see the size of my hand, the size of the card, the thing is massive. It is absolutely redonkulously huge. I really think this angle shows it off almost the best. Just the, the thickness of this card. Unbelievable. So my card should be able to accommodate, or my card, my case should be able to accommodate this card. Um, but, uh... It's going to be a tight fit horizontally like in terms of the width dimension, this dimension, um, with only a few centimeters to spare for the old power adapter here. So hopefully I can get it in there without too much of a bend. And that's, that's really all there is to see, my friends. Um, we'll get a, come in here, get some up close glamour shots for you. But... There's not a whole lot more to be seen. It's a graphics card, just an exceptionally large, exceptionally powerful one. As I said, I really, really hope this will allow me to play the latest games at the highest settings, no compromises, locked 60 FPS, and have plenty of performance overhead for recording, you know, encoding video on the GPU as well. Uh, the new 4000 series are the first cars to support the new AV1 encoders. Um, and so hopefully that will actually improve the quality of the video that I can record. Although by the time it gets to YouTube, it's been compressed anyway. So, you know, uh, a couple of times compressed. So, um, but yeah, we'll see. Maybe there'll be a slight improvement in in visual fidelity, but, um, and hopefully these, these fans, um, do their job well, and, uh, with a, you know, a little power limit on there, I can keep this thing running very cool and very quiet. I think that should be attainable, and, um, you know, my current Strix 3080, it, it runs pretty quiet, but it does ramp up. You can hear it. Uh, in my more uh, demanding games, um, especially you guys may have noticed like at the end of my videos when I've been gaming for an hour, you know, sometimes you, you probably can hear it going in the background there. I do some noise removal in post to try and tame that, but I also really don't like having to use noise removal. I find it, it perceptibly damages the quality of the you know, whispering or the soft speaking or the unboxing sounds or whatever. Um, if you use anything more than just the slightest bit of noise removal. So I like to not use it if I don't have to. So I'm hoping with this card, I can get away with using very little or not at all uh, in future recordings. So, so next up, I got it unbox my power supply, which I'm not going to do on video because it's not that exciting, honestly. It's a big box with a bunch of cables, but um, then I 
I'm going to have to recable my whole build and get this thing installed in there, which will take a little while, but uh, probably by the next time you guys see a gameplay video from me, it'll be running on here, I suspect. Certainly by the next time I'm streaming on Twitch, uh, it'll be, I'll be running this thing. Um, by the way, twitch.tv slash the ASMR nerd. I stream Thursday nights and Sunday nights around 8.30 p.m. Pacific time. I'd love to see you guys there. If you've never been there, it's an awesome time. And you can ask me all about the card. Like I said, barring any major issues, it should be in the PC by that time. Gosh, I just kind of want to keep looking at it from every angle. I just kind of want to keep keep showing it to you guys because it's so beautiful, isn't it? Um, but uh, I guess we should probably wrap this video up. I spent a lot of time talking here, not a whole lot of time unboxing, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the rambling as well, hearing my thoughts about, you know, the current GPU situation and, and pricing. Oh my gosh, NVIDIA is just, just nuts with the current prices. They've basically abandoned, you know, the, the mainstream GPU market in this generation, it seems. Of course, we will eventually get a 4080 or 4060, I should say, probably a 4050, you know. Um, but I feel like, you know, the prices of all the cards have been moving up, up, up over the last few gens. Well, it's not that I feel like they have been. That much is fact. Um, but I will say once again, despite the outrageous pricing of this card, the performance is there to justify it, which is the only reason why I even considered it in the first place. So if you want the best of the best, this is it right now and will be for a while. I have never purchased a top end model before, not once. This is my very first uh, flagship top end model and I'm very excited for it um, and uh, really looking forward to playing some games and creating some content with it as well. So my friends, thank you for watching today. Thank you for helping me achieve this by uh, you know, watching my content, supporting my content. Like I said, this is funded by uh, channel income, and uh, I consider it, you know, a business expense, a channel investment, um, which you all have made possible. So uh, I could not be more grateful, and it's very exciting uh, that I can do that and and reinvest this in the channel, and uh, continue to you know improve the content that I that I put out. It's a really great feeling. So. Thank you all again. I hope you enjoyed this exciting RTX 4090 unboxing, and I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, guys.